Shop here, Leader of the Fish Revolution 2.0 on YouTube, and today we're here at the Dumbo uh, Flea Market, yes, on the Manhattan Bridge, and we're going to see what we can find camera-wise. Everybody's always looking for, you know, vintage analog cameras, but one of the best places to find them are at a flea market like this. So let's go see what we can find and locate. Come on. Okay, so I thought I would share some of my shopping guides when I go to a flea market. First off, I'm never wanting to spend too much money unless it's someone I really trust. It's a dealer who I know is meticulous and goes through their gear and services it before selling it. And I can tell you right now, those people are few and far between. Secondly, I sort of narrow down the parameters of what I'm looking for. I don't just go look at everything. I'm looking for very particular things that fit my working style. So for me, I'm a sucker for folding cameras, specifically folding cameras from the early to mid 1930s. And the top three during that period were Zeiss, Voigtlander, and Velta. So if I see a folding camera by made one of those three manufacturers, and if it has a Zeiss lens on it or a Voigtlander lens, I'm interested. Um, I start looking to things like bellows on the cameras and the condition of the cameras. Finding cameras on shelves that are covered in two inches of dust, that's a no-go for me. Um, I'm also very careful about people who say that the cameras have been tested because it's really easy to buy a piece of, uh, to buy a paperweight at a flea market and not a camera that's going to be usable. So you always want to do your research before you go and narrow down a little bit about what you're looking for. Sometimes if I'm at a flea market and I find a camera that I'm interested in, I'll step aside and go to another booth or further down and I'll do some research on it. I'll quick do a quick Google search, sort of check what I should be looking for, check to see if the camera is a valuable camera, check to see what the faults of the camera could be and sort of get a better idea and then I'll go back and look. But if you see cameras that are covered in dust, if you see lenses that have had no attempt whatsoever to clean it or anything like that, I move on. That's not a vendor that I want to buy from. All right, so as you can see, when you go to a flea market, you really got to look. There's good and there's bad, but remember the number one thing. Any camera you buy at a flea market should be serviced before you use it. Unless it's a simple spring camera, the shutters and the lenses are going to need to be CLA'd. But if you take that little bit of time, it's a camera you can use for decades to come. Thank you very much for listening. Can't wait to hear your thoughts. Now go shoot some film. Okay, so here I am, all finished with the video, and Eve, my brilliant wife, said, hey, what the hell is a CLA, and how much does it cost, and what uh, type of CLA would be expected for different cameras? So here it is in a nutshell. And why would you why would you care if a camera was dirty if you know you're going to have it cleaned anyway? Okay, so the reason I care if a camera's dirty is because it gives me a sense of how the camera's been maintained. You know, you, you, if a camera's really filthy and say it's got leather on it, there's a good chance there could be mold in the leather. If a camera, you know, is just absolutely just horrible, there's a good chance that there's separation in the lens or it could be fungus in the lens, depending how it was stored. I'm not saying the camera has to be pristine, but I I do sort of shy away from cameras that really look beaten to death or are really filthy because it is going to most likely increase the cost of the CLA. Or the possibility that it can't be fixed at all? Well, pretty much everything can be fixed. The question is, is, unless there's not a part available. There are some cameras like wide lux cameras and stuff like that where it's getting more and more difficult to find repair parts for. 3D printing is solving some of that problem, but there are cameras that are more difficult to find, especially older cameras. Um, so what's involved in a CLA? In a camera like a Leica, you know, a CLA could be, you know, lubricating the shutter. It could be, uh, you know, recalibrating the range finder. I'm looking for holes in the cloth shutter. You know, on older cameras, you know, you're looking for cracks in the plastic. You know, once again, holes in, bear, uh, uh, holes in bellows, and do those need to be patched? You're looking on like a folding camera for the parallel between the film plane and the lens plane. You know, there's all sorts of things that go into a CLA, and it just depends on the camera you're talking about. Um, additionally, what does it cost? Once again, it depends on the camera you're talking about. If someone has to completely rebuild a shutter in a Leica M3, recalibrate it, let's say the balsam uh, separation has happened in the viewfinder, that can be hundreds upon hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars to have CLA'd. However, using a camera that's been sitting and that doesn't have the proper lubrication and then using that shutter can end up breaking it. And now you're not talking about cleaning it, lubing it, and adjusting it. 
Now you're talking about replacing it, and that is radically more expensive. You know, Copal shutters, you know, the old shutters, the Compu shutters that are in a lot of the cameras from the 30s and 40s, those are really durable shutters, but heck, they're over 80 years old. You wouldn't drive a car, I hope you wouldn't drive a car, that's been sitting for 80 years and hasn't been used. Obviously, it needs to have an oil change. Obviously, it needs to be checked. Same thing is true with these cameras. If you find a camera, and I'm talking even simple cameras like Nikon Fs and stuff like that, all those cameras should be taken to a good shop. And how do you find a good shop? It's this amazing thing called Google. Go on Google, go on photo forums. You're not the first person ever looking for someone to clean or lubricate a camera and find a, a provider that is reputable. It's not inexpensive. Some cameras require CLAs at a regular interval. For instance, the Wideflex camera, you know, depending on how much you film you shoot, you may have to send it off every six months, every year, every two years to be CLA'd. Other cameras like an M3 or like the Zeiss uh, Super Iconta folders that I use, they can go decades without needing to be CLA'd. So it just depends on the camera, the build, and your uses. And you wanted to say something, Eve? No, no, you covered it. Okay. Thank you very much for listening. Now go shoot some film.